All right, welcome. Uh, I know we're just getting back from lunch and there's a great keynote right now. Um, but uh, everybody pile in, uh, find a seat. If you're standing around on the fringes on your phone, come over here, we're about to talk about security. Everybody loves security. If you don't know about Heroku yet, you might learn a little bit today. Uh, let's get started. Uh, my name is Matthew. Uh, I am a product security engineer at Heroku. And uh, today we're going to be talking about how to secure your Heroku applications. Now, we're not going to talk about application security, how to develop your application securely, but we're going to cover some of the features that you can use in Heroku to uh, enhance the security of your application and also to bolster the account that you're using or the accounts that you're using uh, to develop the application. First and foremost, uh, for <laughs> If you are uh, uh, attending today, please only make um, purchase decisions uh, of Salesforce products based on what we say we offer today. Um, I might talk about some beta features. Those are subject to change. Um, hopefully, you read that very quickly because we're moving on. First of all, what is Heroku? Maybe you need a refresher. Maybe you never heard of it before. Um, Heroku is a cloud application platform for deploying an application uh, to the world. If you have an idea and you want a web app or an API uh, to exist, it's the easiest way to get that done. Anytime you're trying to put a web application out uh, for the world to see and use and benefit from, the path to getting that done from the time that the idea pops into your head is fraught with a lot of decisions and, and a lot of paths that you could go down that might be, uh, might be a little difficult. Um, so what Heroku does for developers is simplifies that whole process. You can say, I want this to exist. I really don't care so much about how logging happens. Uh, I don't want to be or I, I am not a system administrator. I don't know where to start with standing up a VPC or something like that. Maybe you don't know uh, a heck of a lot about Docker yet. doesn't matter. This is the easiest way to take that idea regardless of the application uh, framework and language that you're using and ship it, so to speak. So we're going to go on a bit of a journey today to securing our Heroku applications. And before you start off on any journey, uh, the thing you, you really ought to begin with is planning and, and choosing the proper gear. So uh, there's a few decisions you're going to need to make up front. The main buckets of those are your, what's called your runtime model. Um, it just depends on where you, where you or your orga organization is at uh, in terms of uh, you know, technological maturity and, and, and compliance requirements and things like that, and, and also your budget. So you may choose our, uh, what's called common runtime, uh, which is a shared multi-tenant environment where your application is going to run, and that starts at free. So you could have something out and running on the internet to show without spending any money yet. Um, I've been a Heroku user, and, and of course now I work on it, uh, been using it for a better part of a decade now, and I started with that in college, and it's, it supports you know, all the way up to the enterprise. So um, you'll have to decide what's the most appropriate for you, running in that shared runtime, or in our private spaces, which is an isolated network. Uh, every one of your instances of your application that's running is on its own, uh, own uh, machine. And you have uh, the flexibility to lock down that network to only allow access to it and the applications from, say, uh, your corporate office network. And you have a set of uh, predictable IP addresses where traffic coming out of your space will originate from. So you can lock down um, connections that way as well. And for our Shield private spaces, uh, this is something that you may need if you have certain compliance mandates, say uh, PCI compliance. Um, it's, it's a lot of little tweaks and, and configurations and, and uh, some, some features uh, bolstered that allow you to meet those compliance mandates. And it, it, very closely mirroring the runtime model is uh, our data service plans. Heroku offers a few types of data stores. Um, the main one you're probably going to think about is a relational database. That's Heroku Postgres, which is PostgreSQL. And the standard premium, private, and shield plans all have um, 
the differences you, you would expect across uh, data service plans, like uh, size and, and number of connections and things like that. But they also mirror the, uh, the isolation and security guarantees of our uh, runtime model plans. So those are, those are a direct fit there. Uh, and one other thing that you probably want to think about up front is whether your application needs to run in a certain place, either due to latency concerns or uh, maybe data residency. Say that your application and the data that's stored by it all need to be uh, hosted in Germany. That's possible as well. So with those decisions in mind, um, let's set off to, to secure our Heroku application, secure our accounts. First of all, we're going to start with user access. Um, if you take one thing away from this talk about using Heroku securely, uh, let it be to enable two-factor authentication. So you can use a, a mobile app like Salesforce Authenticator here, which is free and it's available in both the Android and uh, iPhone app stores. And that is going to uh, provide a time-based uh, second factor for you to enter in every time you log into Heroku. So it's not only just your email address and password. Um, you probably, if you, you know, follow the news, you see that it's very common these days for companies that have an email address and a password for you because you have some kind of online account with them to have that information stolen. Uh, hopefully, you're using a unique password for every service that you sign up for. But let's say you don't, and your email address and your password are you know, found online somewhere, and it works for Heroku too. That's really bad news. So the second factor is something that that attacker doesn't have. Um, they don't know this code that changes every six, uh, 60 seconds. So please make use of this. If you do nothing else, start there. Um, another feature I want to talk about is our single sign-on. If you have a uh, SAML identity provider uh, at your organization, if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. But if you do have that, we support connecting your IDP with Heroku so that all of your developers from your company can log in that way. It streamlines onboarding, offboarding. It's uh, highly recommended if, if that's something that your org supports. We also offer rule-based access controls. And access controls in general that, that kind of scale based on uh, your use cases. Um, if you were like me back when I was in college and just trying to put something out there, uh, build a Ruby on Rails app with a friend of mine, you might just add them as a collaborator to the app. And there isn't a whole lot of extra structure that you need to, um, need to worry about to make it possible to collaborate. You also don't need to share credentials to get in, which is really bad. But we scale up to teams as well. So if you're you know, a small dev shop uh, or you want to collaborate that way, you can share uh, applications, pipelines that the apps move through, private spaces, and all of your consolidated billing across a team. And you're able to add and remove users that way uh, to more than just one application. Um, then at the top end of, of this, we have our enterprise accounts. And those have teams underneath them as well. But they also have more sophisticated user administration, user management. Um, you're able to specify which add-ons are allowed to be used by the org, and we'll, we'll get into that. You have visibility into who does and does not have second factor authentication turned on. We have uh, SSO, as I mentioned, and you're able to lock applications so that certain developers in your org can access an app, others cannot, depending on uh, your needs. And within all of that, in relation to a Heroku application, a user either has a, a role of view, deploy, operate, or manage from uh, you know, least uh, level of privilege to greatest, giving you the flexibility to allow someone to see an application and see if it's up, see its metrics, how is it doing in terms of performance, uh, how much is it costing. But that doesn't give them the ability to deploy. It doesn't even give them the ability to download the code that uh, makes up the application. And they can't add other users to the app as well. So we give you a lot of flexibility there across those four roles. Along similar lines, we have um, some access control features with Heroku Postgres that are really handy. Um, so you don't have to connect to the database directly and issue a lot of uh, PSQL statements to create roles and give them certain levels of access. We have a, a nice wrapper around that in both uh, data.heroku.com and through our command line tool to give, for example, a read-only role. Uh, say you have another application that you want to connect up to the data uh, behind your main app. 
but it's only a, an analytics type of function. It really doesn't have any business being able to write back to that data store. So you could create a read-only credential and then attach it to the database. Uh, if for some reason that gets exposed and you need to change that credential fast, you can do that by either removing it or, or choosing to rotate it, and it will seamlessly update the other app without impacting the primary use case or the primary use of that database or any others that, that you've created. So that was user access. Moving on to network access, this is all about connecting things into your uh, Heroku apps or into your private space and uh, back out as well. We allow you to trust IP ranges to access your private spaces. So this is you want to use a feature like this. This is uh, one indication that you're probably going to want to use a private space and not our common runtime. One uh, reason you might use this is that you have a certain range of IPs on your corporate network, and you only want uh, machines to, on that network to be able to access your applications. So you want to make this kind of an intranet app. Uh, you can do that. You can also do the same thing with our data stores, and that is currently in beta. If you have other Amazon VPCs and Heroku private spaces are implemented as AWS VPCs, you can peer those with your private space through VPC peering. So you may have other data stores running in, a, in another Amazon VPC, or maybe you have an existing deployment there, and you'd like to join those networks, you can do that. You can even do that across the region. We also offer site-to-site -site VPN. So if you have an IPsec VPN in your organization, you can connect that up with your uh, Heroku private space and allow your employees to access your applications that way. You can make the applications within that uh, space not accessible to the internet. So only those uh, employees that are tunneled in via VPN are able to access those applications. And within the space, we allow apps to discover one another. Uh, via our DNS discovery feature and, uh, and just communicate with one another without going um, uh, back out over the internet uh, or leave, yeah, leaving your private space uh, isolated network. We also offer uh, for all of our runtime models, uh, and no matter how much you pay us, doesn't matter, we offer transport encryption, which I highly recommend you use at all times. Um, we have our most convenient offering uh, for that is our automated certificate management. And that is powered by Let's Encrypt. So if you have uh, even a $7 a month uh, instance of your application running, you get this for free. And that's, that's updating your certificate automatically on your behalf. So you're not needing to go buy the certificate somewhere and install it and, and do that again you know, in time for it to, to not lapse. This just happens automatically. So all you need to do is run Heroku certs auto enable. It's very handy. We still offer our endpoint TLS as well. That's an add-on that you can install. And you'll need to provision the, uh, the TLS certificate from somebody and install that yourself. We have a few more to cover uh, beyond user and network access. There we go. Remember I talked about add-ons earlier and the ability to uh, whitelist that within your enterprise account. If you're not familiar with add-ons, think of them as uh, it, think of the add-ons marketplace as the app exchange for your for your app. So this is where you can provision other data stores, message queues, um, logging providers that give you a destination for your apps to be stored, analyzed. Maybe you want to alert on certain activity happening on your app. Uh, that's all possible through the add-on marketplace. We have 150 services about, last I checked. Um, these are all really great and convenient to use as building blocks for your application. But if you're in an enterprise context, you may want to say which of those are allowed to be used. Uh, maybe only services that y your company has an existing agreement with, or maybe your security team has had a chance to pen test those services, and you allow those and no others. You can also make exceptions to this if need be. We allow you to turn on third party, third party OAuth uh, and, and turn it off. So these are, uh, these are uh, third party connections to your Heroku account that allow you to automate uh, your use of Heroku and things like that. Um, maybe that's not something you want to allow in your organization. You can switch that off for the whole enterprise account, and that applies to all users. We also provide advanced logging for our Heroku Shield. That was one of those runtime models that I mentioned. 
uh, in, in a Shield private space, every time a developer runs Heroku run, you know, Bash or something like that against an application in, a, in that space, um, that's an interactive dev console, everything that they type is logged. So let's say if unfortunately uh, you know, somebody makes a mistake and you're trying to track down very quickly who did it and how they, how they destroyed the production database or something like that, um, you have logs of everything that happened so that you can piece that back together. All of these logs can go to uh, a central destination by entering in a log drain URL here. Maybe that's your seam, or you know, maybe you have a Splunk cluster and you'd like all of your application, routing, and database logs and things like that to go to one place where they're definitely stored. Let's say you need to store them for seven years. Uh, you can alert on them and things, things like that. So that's all I got today. Um, if you want to know more about Heroku and know more about these uh, security features, um, I suggest you check out these links here. Um, the Dev Center itself is just a wealth of information for using Heroku. That's a really good starting place as well. And we have a great trailhead, uh, a trail for you to check out called Heroku Enterprise. So um, yeah, if you want to know more, please go there. Also, we have even more great security sessions going on this week at Dreamforce. Um, take a photo of that if you want to uh, you know, file that away for later. And please come see us at the Security Lodge. Thank you so much for coming.